see my knees go weak Trying to keep it together Hey girl, I never ever thought we'd be I never ever thought I'd see Then I saw your smile Oh, we can go across the ocean to see the world tonight Oh, say hello You got your breakfast? You got your breakfast? Got your fresh food and water. Yep, good girl. Good morning. And a beautiful morning it is. It's about 7 o'clock. Flat, calm. We had lots of rain last night. First time in a long time, which is good because the island really needed it. We haven't had rain in a long time. So they were happy about that, I'm sure, and hopefully we get some sun back today. I see some blue sky appearing on the horizon, so that's always a nice start. But today, I know a lot of you guys, I mean a lot, have been asking me, hey, what the heck's going on with your voice? <laughs> well, honestly, I haven't been ignoring you, I just honestly really don't know what to say because I don't know what exactly caused it but lately it's been getting a little bit better but I have to relax you know and take my time and just let it heal because I'm pretty sure it was caused by all the stress we had in recent months and some of you probably remember I mean that started when little Richie ended up in the hospital and that wasn't so long ago and that was a very traumatic event for the both of us I mean sitting there watching your son laying on the bed not take a breath for four minutes turning blue <laughs> and then somehow came back you know we were very lucky but then of course we spent the next two days in the hospital with him in a very weakened state you know emotionally physically and I'm sure that broke down our immune system and and we just picked up anything we came in contact with and Madalena and I both got sick for a couple of days and it just knocked the wind out of us and that's pretty much when my voice started to get a little rickety so it hasn't really healed since then because of course we were followed up you remember when we ended up taking Richie to the hospital it was because uh, well it was not because but it was on the exact same day we were supposed to take the boat to the dock to start our engine project so yes I believe we are ready to go and we got a couple friends here to help out uh, Sebastian Benji. And that is where our day turned upside down in one instant with the threat of changing our lives forever. With the help of our onboard security cameras, I can take you back about two minutes in time and show you how fast things can change from normal to turmoil. Because here you can plainly see everybody is calm and just going about our duties as we get ready to move the boat. Our crew, Anna, is up in the forward cabin playing with and looking after Ricardo while Maddie makes up his formula. And our friends, Benjamin and Sandra, are in the cockpit waiting to help us with moving the boat to the dock. All is normal and Madalena goes up to the front cabin to feed Ricardo so he stays happy during the maneuver. Sandra leaves the cabin because all is still normal, but Madalena is looking closely and notices there's something wrong with Ricardo. He's just laying there, not moving and not responding. At that point, they realize he's not breathing, and Anna comes running out of the room screaming for me. I can tell you that what I walked into has to be any parent's worst nightmare. My son laying on the bed, lifeless and blue, and my wife Madalena frantically pressing on his chest trying to get him to respond. But there was no response. What happened? I'm My friend, you okay? No. Oh my God. Stop. I 
Ayeri. Arena Hospital. And of course, the engine project got put on hold due to that for a little bit, but then we did end up taking the boat to the dock and getting started. And then of course we went straight into that, which was supposed to be a three to five day event to get the engine out and the new one installed. Ended up taking <laughs> over three weeks, you know, for various reasons, dealing with weather and storms and just the stress of having our home, just, you know, sitting there with no engine, no backup device, if any of these storms got nasty. Well, Mr. Perkins, you give us a great life of service, 26 years and over 17,000 hours, and we can't thank you enough, but it's time for us to move on. So we hope you enjoy your new life as a backup generator here on San Andres. So I guess uh, everything just kind of rolled on from there. So it starts in the hospital and then with three weeks sitting at the dock and you know the dock is expensive also and we weren't expecting to spend over three weeks there. And the guys, you know, they're great guys. They did a good job, but ultimately, you know, some days they just didn't show up because <laughs> that's the way islanders are. Yeah, I don't feel like working today. So manana, man, manana. Manana might be manana, it might be Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. You never know when it's going to be. So it was a bit stressful for us also because, you know, we had this big red new engine sitting in the middle of our living room <laughs> and just trying to figure out what to do because we couldn't get the guys to come and help finish the job. But finally we did finish the job and then of course boom straight into the next thing. The engine's not even tested yet. We haven't even run it at sea and there's a freaking hurricane coming straight at us. Unfortunately, our glorious day was overshadowed by this guy, who suddenly appeared on our radar and was heading straight for us, again. We came to San Andres because it's well below the forecast hurricane belt, but that is significantly changing in the past couple years, as you guys might remember. We literally had just a few days to decide what we were gonna do and where we were gonna go, but our decision was taken away from us. And if we thought we had stress before, this was gonna be a new high. We are ready. We are almost ready to see. I mean, you can't imagine. And we're wondering, is the engine okay? But we realized we need to leave the island because it's targeted straight at San Andres and that was a bit of a nightmare for us, but we ended up doing our sea trials. Everything was perfect, you know, we were lucky. Everything was good. We tested everything and rechecked and everything was fine. So we thought at the time, which was good, and that was all we needed. But we started booking, you know, to get out of there. And then of course, we were all set and getting our paperwork done and then immigration said, nope, we can't let you leave because you have no passport for little, little Richie and we can't take the chance that you're going to get all the way to Panama and they're going to deny him admission because he doesn't have legitimate travel documents because then it would fall back on Colombia immigration for releasing him in the first place and they didn't want to take that chance of being in trouble with another country you know there's enough bad stuff going on between Panama and Colombia as it is so that put us in the middle of their crap so to speak but 
now we're looking at a hurricane chasing down on us so all we could do we had literally just a couple hours to change our plan and start implementing you know storm tactics we had to batten down and get ready because this thing was coming straight for us seriously you, why you grew the wind sail eh? <laughs> because First you are gaining your life <laughs> <laughs> because the hurricane is coming Maddie and I just spent two hours arguing in immigration department that we needed to make an emergency departure for our own safety because we didn't know what was going to happen in San Andres. And every hour ticking away was putting us more and more at risk. But immigration remained steadfast and said, nope, sorry, we cannot grant you permission to leave without a passport for Ricardo Jr. All the other selling boat has gone to Panama. And yeah, another hurricane for us in San Andres. Hmm. Yeah. We were so lucky with that one, but again, you can't imagine the stress of all this stuff coming down the pipe one after the other, just boom, 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 boom. And we survived that one, luckily, because the storm went south of us. But again, that was unprecedented. These storms have never gone south of San Andres, so. You know, times are changing. We can't count on any prediction, any forecast anymore. I just don't even know what to make of it. But the storm went south of us, missed us. We never saw more than 35 to 40 knots. So very, very lucky. But then, as you remember, we finally did get Richie's passport. So we had the next weather window coming up. So we decided, okay, it's time for us to go. We got everything ready. And just as we were having our final goodbyes and, you know, I was making one last ride around the island with some friends and <laughs> I have my bike accident and boom, down I go. So the next few days offered quite a progression of uh, scary captain pictures as I seem to be trying out for a zombie apocalypse movie or something. But all I can say is I consider myself very lucky that it wasn't worse than it was. I remember just getting tossed off the side of the bike and the first thing touching the ground was my face just sliding sideways on the the concrete. Somehow I spun around and stopped and no damage on my shoulders, elbows, nothing, just one knee, my wrists and across my face. But thankfully I gotta put out a big shout out to Maui Gyms because their lenses did exactly what they were supposed to. They shattered on impact when my face hit but they never splintered or broke and I really think I have them to thank for the fact that I didn't lose an eye. Of course the day after even little Richie was mocking me. Can you see the resemblance? <laughs> Cheeky little bugger. Smash the shit out of my face. Almost break both my wrists. Luckily, you know, they weren't broken, no fractures, but man, did it feel like it. And they were sore for a long, long time. And they still are. They still haven't healed, but that's why I still have the braces that sometimes if I need to do something strong on the boat, I put on the braces just in case, you know, just to give me a little bit of backup. But yeah, that was nasty. And of course, you know, we had uh, Brian and Alyssa on board and they were just waiting to go to Panama. And here now I screw myself up bad. So though we knew we still wanted to leave in the near future, but I might not be able to help with everything on the boat. So we had to train Brian and Alyssa to be able to handle things if I needed help. So they knew what to do. So we took some time doing that, probably a few weeks, and then we got ready and then we set sail. And then of course we set out on our first major journey offshore with little Richie on board and a brand new engine and a new crew and, and me in braces, you know, just injured, so. Bye bye San Andres. We'll miss you. Panama. On to the next chapter. When we got here, it was like a big breath of relief. Big breath of relief. You know, we could finally just chill and relax. And then, of course, we discovered the boat was sinking. <laughs> it just... Oh, man. Now we have a big problem because now there's water coming in the backside of the prop shaft seal and we can't stop it. So enter another friend, also Rick, from the boat next door called Mai Tai. 
When I put out a call that we were taking on water and couldn't stop it, he hopped right in his dinghy and came over with his dive gear. Because the first priority is to stop the water from entering the boat, and right now the only place we can do that is from outside. It sounds surreal, you know, but that's just the way it's been. And I think honestly that all that back-to-back -back stress is just what's kept my, my uh, voice from healing. <clears throat> you can hear it gets worse as I keep talking, so sometimes it's better I just stop talking, but... I'm just trying to relay to you guys what's happened and what I think has happened, you know, and, but we had it checked. Like I went to the doctor and they went with the mirrors and checked and looking, you know, and they said, there's no problem, nothing's damaged. They gave me some medication. They gave me some different potions to gargle with. And I tried all of that stuff, but nothing made any difference. So no, I just figured it was gonna take time or Maybe it's just changed permanently and it's never going to come back. I have no idea. But some days it's boom, perfect. And then boom, it's gone. And I have no idea what causes it. The change is just, I'll be mid-sentence and my voice is perfect. And then I just uh, feel like I'm pushing to get the words out, you know, so. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't ignoring you guys on the, the question. I just didn't know what to tell you, and I've just been hoping that it just goes away, but here we are several months later, and it hasn't gone away, so it might be with me for a while. So anyway, I hope you guys will just kind of live with me through it until we find out, but I'll keep plugging away one way or another. It's not going to stop me. It just slows me down <laughs> a little bit, not that much. Anyway... You know, thanks for your concern, thanks for your support, thanks to all of you. I mean, you guys are the one thing that keep us going. And if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think I'd even want to just keep doing the videos and things like that at this moment because, I don't know, I just felt like taking some time, but I also didn't want to keep you guys waiting because, I know, I think you guys appreciate what we do and we certainly appreciate you, so it's a mutually beneficial process. So, again, thanks for that. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Just wanted to say hi and thanks, guys. And I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao for now.